Music in space is music played in or broadcast from a spacecraft in outer space. According to the Smithsonian Institution, the first musical instruments played in outer space were an eight-note honer, Little Lady, harmonica and a handful of small bells carried by American astronauts Wally Shearer and Thomas P. Stafford aboard Gemini 6A. Upon achieving a space rendezvous in Earth orbit with their sister ship Gemini 7 in December 1965, Shira and Stafford played a rendition of Jingle Bells over the radio after jokingly claiming to have seen an unidentified flying object piloted by Santa Claus. The instruments had been smuggled onboard without NASA's knowledge, leading Mission Control Director Elliot C. to exclaim, You're too much, to Shira after the song. The harmonica was donated to the Smithsonian by Shira in 1967, with his note that it plays quite well. In the 1970s music tape cassettes were brought to the American space station Skylab, while Soviet cosmonauts Alexander Levakin and Yuri Romanenko brought a guitar to the space station Mir in 1987. Musical instruments must be checked for gases they may emit before being taken aboard the confined environment of a space station. As of 2003, instruments that have been aboard the International Space Station include a flute, a keyboard guitar, a saxophone, and a didgeridoo. Music in space has been a focal point of public relation events of various human spaceflight programs. NASA astronaut Carl Walls played a rendition of the Elvis Presley song, Heartbreak Hotel, aboard the ISS in 2003, which was also recorded and transmitted to Earth. Canadian Space Agency astronaut Chris Hadfield, commander of Expedition 35 to the International Space Station, recorded a music video of the song, Space Oddity, by David Bowie aboard the space station. The first music video ever shot in space, the video went viral and received widespread international media coverage after being posted to YouTube. Bowie himself later called the cover, possibly the most poignant version of the song ever created. Topic. Dongfang Hong I Dongfang Hong I simplified Chinese, Dongfang Hong Yi Hao traditional Chinese, Dongfang Hong Yi Hao pinyin, Dongfang Hong Yi Hao, literally, the East is Red One, was the People's Republic of China's first space satellite, launched successfully on 24 April 1970 as part of the PRC's Dongfang Hong Space Satellite Program. The satellite carried a radio transmitter which broadcast the song of the same name, Dongfanghong or The East is Red. The broadcast lasted for 20 days while in orbit. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Apollo 17. A few bars of The Fountain in the Park were sung on the moon by NASA astronauts Harrison Schmidt and Eugene Cernan on the 1972 Apollo 17 mission. Schmidt started by singing, I was strolling on the moon one day. When Cernan joined in, Cernan kept with the original, Merry Month of May. However, while Schmidt sang, December, which was the actual date at the time. After a brief debate, Schmidt resumed, singing, When much to my surprise, a pair of bonny eyes until he could no longer remember the lyrics and began vocalizing the notes instead. Moments later, capsule communicator Robert A. Parker cut in from Houston, saying, Sorry about that, guys, but today may be December. <laughs> Voyager Golden Record The Voyager program probes Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 which by 2016 were still the farthest human-made object from Earth also Voyager 1 is reported to have reached interstellar space where the galactic plasma is present. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were launched by NASA with a message aboard a kind of time capsule, intended to communicate to extraterrestrials a story of the world of humans on Earth. This is a present from a small, distant world, a token of our sounds, our science, our images, our music, our thoughts and our feelings. We are attempting to survive our time so we may live into yours. Audio sections contain the spoken greetings in the remaining four languages, including Esperanto and Kung, and also whale sounds were provided by Roger Payne. The next audio section is devoted to the sounds of Earth that include included within the sounds of Earth. 
Audio portion of the Golden Record is a track containing the inspirational message per aspera ad astra in Morse code. Translated from Latin, it means, "...through hardships to the stars". <laughs> Pink Floyd On 21 November 1988, a cassette tape of Pink Floyd's Live Delicate Sound of Thunder album minus the cassette box, for weight reasons was taken into space by the crew of the Soviet Soyuz TM-7 mission. The launch, at Baikonur Cosmodrome, was attended by the bands David Gilmour and Nick Mason, who made an audio recording of the event for potential use in a future project. This was claimed by Gilmour to have been the first rock music recording in space. The tape was left on Mir when the mission crew returned to Earth. Topic: <inaudible> Beagle 2 and Blur. In 2003, the British space organization's Beagle 2 probe was scheduled to play a song from the UK music band Blur upon touchdown on the planet Mars. It was not known what happened to Beagle 2 for 11 years after landing, and it was considered lost. When it was found intact in 2015, however, the possibility was raised that Beagle 2 had successfully played the song on Christmas Day in 2003 upon landing, but failed to transmit back to Earth. <laughs> Curiosity rover and reach for the stars American recording artist Will.i.am wrote, produced, and recorded the song. Reach for the Stars, alternately subtitled, Mars Edition, and NASA Edition, in commemoration of the landing of the Curiosity rover on Mars. The song was first released on August 28, 2012, and it became the first song that was successfully broadcast from another planet. <laughs> Elon Musk's Tesla Roadster Elon Musk's Tesla Roadster was launched into Earth orbit, then solar orbit, in February 2018 as part of the Falcon Heavy test flight. The sound system on board the car was looping the Bowie songs, Space Oddity, and Life on Mars. 